Albert Grossman, who was Bob's manager, came to our office and uh, actually I wasn't there. My partner Ricky Leacock was there. And he said, would anybody uh, be interested in making a film with my client, Bob Dylan? And Leacock said, uh, who's Bob Dylan? So he said, maybe I better wait for your partner. <laughs> I knew Bob Dylan's name. I knew what he was doing. Uh, I hadn't really listened to a lot of his music. And that was kind of how it started. Bob said uh, something about it. He said, I had this idea. And the idea was making up all the cards and holding them up to this song, which he just recorded and just released. And I said, that was a fantastic idea. John is in a basement mixing up the medicine. I'm on a pavement thinking about the government. You can't help but when you go into these films, you sort of start off with a preconception. You'd be some sort of a robot if you didn't. But in general, I find that it's never helpful. And then after a while, you don't have time to do that. You go where your feet take you. I don't know who threw that glass in the yeah. street? Yeah, this is Who right. did it? This now you better right. tell me, if somebody don't tell me who yeah. did it, you're all gonna get the fuck out of here right. and never come right. back. You don't think about where's a good place to stand. You don't read light meters. You don't do any of that stuff. You just don't have time. I was looking at Give Me Shelter the other night, and in one of the shots, you, you see a guy, a hand with a meter in front of the picture, and I thought, who the hell, and you're in a dark room. Why would anybody bring out a meter? You're wide open. There's no question you're wide open. Why would you have a meter? In those days, films weren't really expensive to make. I had a camera I made myself because there was no camera that was quiet and would shoot synchronously. Uh, black and white film was as cheap as anything could be in those days. The only expense I had was really travel. Really, it was going to be me by myself and a person to do a concert sound, just the two of us. When you're just by yourself, pretty much, or there's just two of you, nobody sees that. In they don't connect that with what comes in a theater later. You're somebody that is hanging out with them. And after a while, they get used to it, and you just become part of the group. It's funny. It's the thing that everybody worries about and always asks me about. And it's the one thing that never comes up as a problem. We never think about it. We just shoot. Every day had intriguing things. We'd, when we stopped in front of the music store up at Edinburgh, there were all these weird guitars. They don't have those guitars in the States, man. I mean, I knew he was fooling around with electric. I thought, but he's looking at these things like he'd never seen anything like this. So I was sort of intrigued, you know. Dylan was interesting to me, aside from watching him kind of invent a character for, for, for himself, for the people around him, not just for the camera. He's an entertainer, in the same way Hank Williams was. He's thinking of entertaining people that interest him all the time. What about that? Hear that lonesome whippoorwill Sounds too blue to cry He's kind of always got that in his mind of what, what is an interesting aspect that I can bring out of this that will entertain people. So I cry he had such a, 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 an ability to understand what was going down on a street level in a situation that was like Kerouac, I thought, very much like Kerouac. I always thought of him as a kind of Kerouac kid. At the same time, there were areas in which he was very naive. Dylan would bring up names and things, and then he really wouldn't know much more about them. What is really the truth? Really, the truth is just a plain picture. He'd know just some key aspect, but he wouldn't have really read much beyond. So, so I was always amazed at how naive he was in many ways, and yet how smart he was in others. He was, he, he kind of confounded me, I'll tell you. I, mean, I, I know more about what you do, and, and you don't even have to, have to ask me how or why or anything, uh, just by looking, you know, than you, you'll, you'll ever know about me, ever. Man, I feel like I've been through some kind of uh, thing, right? <laughs> You know, his, his line always is, it's a great film. I'm just sorry it's about me. <laughs>